The Vector Flood Fill tool allows you to fill in areas of your design by creating new shapes with solid, gradient or bitmap fills. You can also use it to quickly override fill settings in your pre-existing vector shapes too. So let's take a look at how this tool works. The first thing I'm going to do is select these four simple shape layers I have on my artboard. Then we can head over to our tools panel and select the Vector Flood Fill tool. You'll notice that when we select this tool, the context toolbar changes, allowing us to adjust how the Vector Flood Fill tool will work. Firstly, we can control the insertion mode of our fill by choosing either inside or in between. Inside creates new shapes and places them inside existing shapes where possible. Let's start by choosing a colour from the swatches panel, and then we can single click into these areas to fill this lower section. You'll notice that when we hover over an area we've selected, the available fill zones become highlighted, so you know exactly where you're about to place your new fill. And now we can see that this newly created shape has been conveniently placed inside our lower target base layer, which we can access with this drop down arrow on the layer itself. But I'll just undo those steps and then I'll change to the in between mode instead. This option creates new shapes and inserts them in between the target shape and the ones above. Now let's try using the click and drag functionality we've also included, which allows us to rapidly create newly filled shapes in one smooth motion. And we can see that this time our fill is on its own separate layer instead of being placed inside the original lower base layer. I'll just quickly create a new shape at the top, and again I'll choose a different colour for this too. Now I have these two new shapes, I'll just turn these layers off so I can show you another setting we have in the context toolbar. If we toggle the fill to visible boundaries option, we can alternate how we fill our shapes and ignore any intersecting areas to only fill within the visible areas instead. This can be a very time saving option in certain scenarios. But I'll keep this turned off for this first example and turn my outline layers back on temporarily so I can finish the design. I'll also choose a different colour for the lower section and another one for the inside section too. Now we're left with these three simple shapes and we can once again turn off any unwanted outlines which we don't currently need. And we can also switch to the fill tool to give these new layers more of a dynamic colour gradient look. Then we can easily reapply a stroke setting to them too. And let's use the handy square bracket keyboard shortcut to quickly increase the stroke weight of these shapes. So we can give this simple cylindrical design a bolder, more impactful look. Another example of how you might use this tool is with this floral album cover design we have here. I'll firstly just change my auto select option to groups to target my outline layer. And then I'll select the vector flood fill tool. And we can begin. In this scenario, we can very quickly create a new base fill layer with our single click and drag motion, which is a great way to achieve this kind of result in a matter of seconds. And as the design itself is made up of many individual curve layers, it would be quite tricky to achieve this using a different method. I'll just turn this layer off for now though, so I can show you another option I'm working on. With this version, I used single clicks to create individual petal layers, and we have a few missing on the right hand side. So with the outline layer selected and the vector flood fill tool enabled again, we can choose our matching gradient fill from our swatches panel and we can click into the petal areas as we have done before. Alternatively, this time we could also drag our chosen fill from the swatches panel itself, which also gives us this handy preview every time we approach a fillable area, showing us an example of how the fill will look before we release it onto our design. This can be very useful when working with multiple colours in your design or when using bitmap fills, which is something we'll also go on to look at shortly. Another huge benefit to the Vector Flood Fill tool is that it allows you to fill open or non-closed shapes very easily. And if we look closer at this floral vector design, we can see it was made with the pencil and pen tools by creating each line individually and ensuring that no gaps were left between lines or in our intended fill areas. And it works particularly well when combined with this tool, as each of our petal shapes are created on their own independent layer, separate to our line work. And with our lines being unexpanded vector curves, we also have a lot more flexibility with them, so we can adjust the curve characteristics using the stroke panel and increase the boldness of our overall design. And one additional step here might be to change these curve layers to an erase blend mode, which allows the line work to be hidden and let's part of the textured vinyl background show through instead. 
Lastly, I just wanted to show you how you might utilize bitmap fills with this tool too. So let's start by quickly filling in some of the areas of this mascot design. I'll use orange for the body and blue for the legs and the flag. For these newly coloured areas, I'd also like to apply a simple bitmap fill to them. We can do this in a number of different ways, but the first thing we need to do is set our bitmap fill. I'll choose one of these halftone patterns from my file browser, which I prepared earlier. Now we can utilise some of the fill mode settings we have in the context toolbar as well. If we start with add on top, this will simply add any new fills on top of the current fill, allowing us to adjust these stacked fills via the appearance panel. If we opt for knockout, this will change to completely replace any fill we originally had with the new fill settings we've enabled. And before we try this, I'll adjust one of these fit modes as well. If we try max fit instead of none, which we were using before, notice that the half tones have been scaled to fill the entire area. However, you may notice that some of the pattern contents may be cropped with this option. Alternatively, with min fit enabled, that will ensure that all of your bitmap fill is scaled to be completely visible inside the area instead. Then finally, the stretch option will usually give you distorted results depending on the relative proportions of the area you're filling and the nature of the bitmap fill you're using too. So for the remainder of this design, I'm going to stick with none, which avoids our pattern being automatically scaled and gives us something closer to the finished result we're looking for. I'll also change to the smart refill option next too. This is usually enabled by default and works in a similar way to the add on top option but this time it helps us to avoid flooding our design with the same bitmap fill twice. So this is no doubt a great option to use in most scenarios. I'll now simply apply my bitmap fill to the newly colored areas. And in this case, I want them to be applied on top of these new shapes. So I'll make sure these layers are selected this time. Then we can proceed to apply the new bitmap fill. Don't forget that as with many things in the Affinity apps, this is a non-destructive function. So we can easily go back to the appearance panel to toggle the new bitmap fill on or off again as we did before. And if I reselect these layers and go back to the fill tool, I can easily adjust the placement and scaling of the bitmap fill too. And then one final step I'd like to make with this design is to slightly offset these new fills. Using shift and the arrow keys and with the move tool enabled, we can give the design a slightly more vintage, almost misprinted look and just highlights one of the benefits of using this tool to help separate our line work from our fills, giving us more overall control and flexibility with our design. So that was a run through of the Vector Flood Fill tool in Affinity Designer and some creative use cases to consider too. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.